Hello, Dumelang, Absheli, Sanbonani. Welcome to Numa Church. Thank you, thank you so much for deciding to, to tune in. Um, in the spirit of Youth uh, Month or celebrating Youth Month, we've decided to, to have a panel discussion with our friends who serve in different capacities within the, the youth ministry and uh, our next generation youth uh, or young people. So we will be asking or having a panel discussion where we just ask a few questions and discuss them. Uh, I'm sure you could pick a few nuggets from what they'll be saying. Uh, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. And I absolutely believe that it's not just about adults sharing that uh, information with each other that sharpens them. But we can also learn from young people as well, even though you're an adult or an adult can learn from a young person as well. So stay tuned, relax, uh, get ready to, to receive what the young people have to say and our friends as well, who serve in different capacities within the, the youth ministry. Uh, so we're gonna start off our discussion uh, with uh, the first question, which uh, is how much have different, uh, different role models of family had an impact in your faith? If you had to identify one person in your life that has impacted you, what was it about them that influenced you and your faith? Uh, Robert, can we start with you? Sounds good. I think the role models are everything, really. I think they're the people who've taught me how to enter into a relationship with Christ and have helped me to get to know Christ. And I think for me, a big one was my grandma. Before COVID, I used to sit next to her in church every week and just simply by her smiling and just showing love to me and to those around her, I think it is in that that I saw the reflection of Christ more than anything she'd ever taught me, just simply by going out and in her lifestyle, loving people and just reflecting Christ through that. Okay, that's great. Jordan, got anything? Mine, uh, my role models relate back to my parents. Um, my dad, he, he's a very strong man in his faith as well, and he, he raised my brother and I up well, along with my mom. Um, my dad never really forced our faith on us. He, uh, he gave us that freedom to choose, and even from a young age, he taught us about baptism and all those things, and he said, I'm teaching about this, but it's your choice, and one day I just, I think I was like 11, and then I was like, Dad, I think I'm ready. And then he was with me throughout that. And my mom as well, um, another very strong woman in her faith. Um, she actually led my dad to the Lord. Um, and she's my, she's my dance teacher as well, and I dance at church. So she taught me worship in that way. That's lovely. Thank you for sharing. Caleb, got anything to say? Um, I think I've had a lot of role models because uh, I've lived through my life in the, with the church. And a lot of people in my family, they believe in God. And they've taught me about God and how to stay faithful to him and to know who he is and how to connect with him in my life. Okay, thank you so much. Daniel Rose. Um, yeah, mine's, mine's a bit different. Mine goes to my youth pastor, actually. Um, I only really came to know Christ and, and journey with Christ when I was f about 14, 15. So my youth ministry played a big role. And my youth pastor at the time had a, had a big influence in my life, not only in showing me how a, a strong woman could lead. Um, and I think that influenced my yeah, my approach to, to leadership within the church community a lot, but also somebody who was just very authentic and genuine in her faith. There were no frills, there were no bells and whistles to her. She was just, she was just seeking after the character of Christ in her life. And it was always something that stood out to me um, as I grew and as I journeyed in my walk with Christ of keeping her in mind um, as just wanting to pursue an authentic faith and not needing to look a certain way to to be a certain kind of Christian, um, yeah. And to this day, she is still somebody who is has influence over me and and somebody I would go to if I have questions, if I have doubts, um, which I think is an amazing role that that a youth pastor or a church leader can play in the lives of of youth. Okay, thank you so much for that, Josh. Do you have anything to say, bro? Um, yeah, my, I, I was lucky to have lots of role models, but I think my main one was my grandfather. 
Um, yeah, I think I think the role that that spiritual role models play is when you're young and you and you exploring Christianity and faith and and what it all means. Um, you're told about this Jesus character and to model your life on that person, and but that you don't really know what that means yet, right? At that point, you probably don't know who Jesus is, and so those role models play a really important role as to bridge that gap, mm. to give you a, a human, you know, a, a sort of tangible person you can see as an example of someone to to model after, while walking that journey beside them as, as they get to know God more and then you get to go, know God more and then with the goal one day being that they sort of then let go and you then start to model yourself directly onto Christ. But the idea is that they are reflecting who Christ is to you mm-hmm. and it's that tangible example of someone that you're able to see Christ in. And that's what my grandfather was for me. And it's interesting hearing all of you guys say the same thing that it wasn't someone preaching to you, it wasn't someone, you know, Bible bashing or like, you know, knocking your door and saying, can I read the scripture to you? It was someone who was living their life to the best uh, ability that they could and, and in, in so doing, trying to mirror Christ, trying to be Christ-like and you as a young person seeing that in them. Um, and that's what my grandfather was to me, along with a, a range of other people. But just having the privilege of being able to watch this man, and I didn't know it the first time I started to sort of connect with him, um, but I just thought, oh, here's a guy that's living a li- his life in a way that I would like to. I didn't know it at the time, but in reality, it, it was he was reflecting Christ, and really what I was seeing was, was Christ, and going, I would like to be like that. Um, so yeah, so that's who my grandfather was, and, and I think why role models play such an important role in our young or, or early stages of, of faith. Okay. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for, 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 for what you've shared. I think I'm reminded by a scripture in the word that says, follow me as I follow Christ, as you guys are like speaking. And I think Josh has like a favorite quote, which says, uh, preach the gospel, but where, where necessary, use words. And I think that's just what you guys are like uh, speaking about now. Uh, we'll move over to our, um, our second question, which is, uh, what does it mean to identify as a Christian? How do you deal with the pressures of society and friends mm. that sometimes come against the values and identity of being a Christian? Jordan, can we start with you? Um, so the first question was, how do you identify yeah. as a Christian? Yeah. Uh, must I ask you again? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> what does it mean to identify as a Christian? Personally, that's keeping God at the center of my life and basically relating everything back to him, um, trying to love how he loved, um, trying to treat people the way he treats people and love people the way he loves me. Yeah. Okay. And then the follow-up question to that is, how do you deal with pressures of society and friends that sometimes come against the values and identity of being a Christian? Should we come back to yes, you? Yes. Okay, cool. Any of these? Guys, between the two you guys. So uh, I think I think let's focus on the 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 purpose uh, the the identity question first because that's once we have an understanding of that we can move on to the you know how do we resist the pressures because the two are linked but we have to have a firm idea of when we say identify as a Christian we have to have a, have an idea of what we mean by that before we engage with the pressures that you know young people face from peers. Um, and this is something that, that um, we've been talking a lot about at school, but identity is about purpose, right? If, if I say I identify as this, I'm saying my purpose is to be the thing. Um, so if I identify as an academic, then I'm saying my purpose is to live out that identity. So identity is about purpose. So if I'm saying my identity is in Christ, really what I'm saying is my purpose why I'm here, my purpose for my life and how I'm going to live my life is to be Christ-like and to live in such a way that mirrors Christ as best as I can with all the faults and flaws that will come with it along the way because I'm human, but to the best of my ability to live every moment trying to reflect Christ as much as possible. Um, And and what a beautiful purpose that is. Um, Because 
you know, if my students are writing exams at the moment, and so it's a very stressful time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can, uh, if, if you've been told that your purpose, your identity is in your marks, is in your academic ability, is in the university you're going to go to one day, is in the job that you can have one day, then that's incredible pressure, right? To write those, that stress is going to be overwhelming because you've been told your, your life purpose and identity is attached to some percentage that you're going to be given at the end of that time. But if your identity at the, at the heart of that is, is to be Christ-like and is, is Christ, then while that stuff is important, I think, and being Christ-like and, and having your identity based on Christ doesn't mean you ignore all those other parts of your life. But it means that, you know, that, that exam can maybe not go the way that you wanted it to, or that sports match can not go the way that you wanted it to, or maybe your friendship circle changes, or whatever it is. And those things can still be difficult, but it doesn't rock you to your core because your identity remains consistent. Um, your purpose remains the same. Um, and it, I've just found that so freeing in my life that in every situation and every difficult choice I've had to make and every obstacle I've had to overcome, the first question that I can come to is, is how, how can I respond to this moment in a way that reflects Christ the most? Um, and so uh, that, that's what I think it means when we say I identify as a Christian. I'm saying that Christ is at the center of who I am and, and my purpose is comes from that. Okay. Did you want to say something, Robert? Um, yeah, I was also going to go into the next question. But yeah, I think with identifying as a Christian, it is just sort of believing and trusting in Jesus, but also living a lifestyle that reflects that and sort of actively pursuing God and sort of trying to understand God and have that relationship and going further than that as opposed to just knowing it. Mm. Okay, cool. Got you. Do you guys want to add anything? Just that maybe... You know, we, we have many parts of our identity. I identify as a woman, for example. Um, but as Josh was saying, you, having the core of your identity be Christ, where your decisions, your actions, your thoughts all come out of that place first, then impacts the way that you respond to these other parts of your identity. It impacts the way you respond as a, as a woman and to situations that affect women or as a black person and to situations that affect black people or as a older person and, you know, like various different identities that we have. And so I think that's the challenge and it's not something I, we always all get right and some of us may... You know, if you are a strong feminist, for example, it's quite hard to not just automatically respond first as a woman, um, but to stop yourself and say, actually, is my response Christ-like? Is my response, um, have I considered God in me in my response? Um, how is the Holy Spirit like outworking in me in this space? Um, and so, yeah, that's. I think that's something that I've been challenged with as I've grown older um, and I'm still continued to be challenged with. And I think it's, it's something that does make it hard as we face, you know, pressures from others around us who hold their identity as rooted in other things. Um, and we have to be aware of that and understand that, that they, they're not necessarily rooted in a faith. They might be rooted in their um, gender and their sexual orientation and their, um, in their race and their just religion. Uh, but not necessarily a faith. And so we have to approach that with that understanding and the grace in that understanding of how people are responding and why they are responding like that, but be rooted and firm in who we are and know that, know the, 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 the starting point of our identity has to be Christ. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Let's get into a question about friendships and about people who don't identify as Christians. Uh, how do you guys handle situations where you are attacked for your Christian belief? Maybe within your friendship circle or maybe online as well? How do you, how do you go about handling that? I mean, I think it's no easy thing and I think yeah, you know, as young people, especially, we're surrounding the world with temptation and sort of all different beliefs surrounding us. And I think one key thing is establishing your belief and not just believing things because you're told to believe them, but believing them because you believe in them and sort of engaging with those spaces. And I think 
it's important that we ask questions that we, that can be done in a healthy way. And I think if someone's usually coming and attacking us and trying to prove us wrong as Christians, I don't think God needs us to defend him. And I think in those situations, we can often just take a step back and just love them still. And I think that's sort of what Jesus was seen doing so many times. The people would come and they would tell him he was wrong and they would attack him and he would love them as like he healed the soldiers here who came to kill him. And I think it just having sort of that mercy when those people engage with you and establishing a belief before you go into a situation I found works because it's so hard to, to stay true to your belief sometimes. And I find the only way it's going to work is if I'm living a certain lifestyle out of my love for Jesus and it's born out of that relationship and engagement with God as opposed to because I'm a Christian, but because I love Jesus, I'm doing these things or living this lifestyle. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, just a quick one. What do you mean uh, God doesn't want us to defend him? What does that look like? I mean, I think I've engaged with lots of people who will come with a scriptural scenario and say, like, pro prove you wrong on the scripture here. And I think you don't need to have a whole counter argument of why the scripture proves itself to be correct. And I think there are those arguments, but sometimes there's the analogy of it's more important to win the person than the argument. And sometimes it's not trying to be about better than them in the argument or correcting them or proving that you're right, but just showing that love to them and comes back to the previous question of that's how sort of people come to Christ, through seeing that Christ-like personality in us and that reflection of Christ as opposed to sort of being beaten by hard facts. I've seen few people who've been won over by that sort of argument. Okay, got you. Uh, Jordan. Do you mind just telling us maybe if you have a story like that uh, where you have been attacked for your for your beliefs in, 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 in the Christian faith? I've never actually been attacked for it, but I've been questioned. And through those, like the questioning, I realized that I don't need to have all the answers and that it's okay to um, <coughs> go back and like maybe say, I don't really have the answer to this now, but can I get back to you? And I think it's important, something that I've learned to like continue engaging in that conversation and to not shy away from it because um, a few years back I used to like be very shy and didn't have confidence in like speaking about it or engaging um, in these kind of conversations. But by engaging in them, I've like grown and found different ways to approach it. But realizing that I don't need to have all the answers and that I can come back and it's important to keep that relationship with that person. And to hear their side as well, um, to find out why they do things the way they do, instead of just judging them like straight off because they don't believe the way I do. Okay, thank you. Uh, Caleb, have you ever been attacked for your Christian beliefs and how did you kind of like navigate that? Um, yes, I, I have. Uh, I said something and they, they didn't agree with what I said, but I told them this is what I believe and this is what you believe. Um, and it didn't, it, this is basically where it stopped. Uh, I know that, like, even after I, what I said, we would still be friends, because we hang out all the time, and, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you so much for that, because I think it's so important that when we disagree with people, it doesn't need to lead to us ending those friendships, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know if you, Danny, Danny or Josh, if you want to speak into that, like that whole disagreement with someone about your beliefs, but still being able to be friends, to reconcile, basically. So, yeah, so I, I've got um, a, a really close friend. We've been friends for two decades, and for probably the first 13, 14 years of our friendship, we had like totally different viewpoints on on church and and on God uh, she was agnostic um sort of agnostic and maybe even leaning towards atheist and I was a new Christian and very excited <laughs> um about following Jesus and we would have lots of conversations um about her viewpoints and perspectives and my viewpoints and perspectives and I think what was so crucial about that friendship and what it's taught me and how to be in other, in, in other friendships with people who have different perspectives and viewpoints to me is that we just listened to each other and we respected each other's viewpoints and we also allowed each other to be challenged by 
what we had to say. So there were things that she would say that would challenge me. You know, she would say to me, why do you, why do you feel the need to lift your hands in church? And then I would have to say, no, oh, actually, why do I do that? Let me think about that. You know, am I just blindly doing something? Um, and so she would make me think with a broader perspective, which I think is really important. And it's, I think it's a reason why we should engage with people who have different beliefs and viewpoints to us, because we shouldn't be closed-minded. But what also happened is through me being just listening to her and respecting what she thought and not trying to push an agenda on her, not trying to Bible bash her or anything like that, over the years, she eventually came to a point in her life where she decided she wanted to explore faith and she went to church and I was the person she could come and talk to about that, about that decision and about that journey and the questioning she had and I was a safe space for her and I wasn't going to like make it overwhelming because we'd had, we'd had built this trust through our conversation. So I just think, yeah, with, in saying all of that is that people might disagree with us. They might say, you know, I believe this and you believe that exactly what Caleb said, to just go, yeah, that is what you believe and that's what I believe and that's okay that we believe two different things, but let's keep having a conversation about it. Let's keep challenging each other on it. We don't have to fight, we don't have to win, but let's remain engaged because we never know what seeds are being planted in those people and we might never see the fruit of that. We might never see those seeds grow into something, but maybe we will. And my friend now goes to church um, and we can have conversations about God that we're, we're, we're on the same page with it, which is amazing. Um, so, yeah. That's good, thank you so much. Uh, Josh, there's a young person uh, at home and they do have friends who don't believe in, 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 in Christianity but they feel as though they've got these questions that are now possibly influencing them to kind of believe like what their friends believe in. How, what would you say, what advice would you give to this person? So for me, when I was at school, I saw my faith in Christianity as nothing more than a set of rules. And if I followed those rules well enough, that would make me a good enough person to one day get into this place called heaven. Uh, and that's actually a, a pretty, I found that a, a really boring understanding of Christianity and, and I, never, I never really fully understood when I was in high school with that understanding, why is this, you know, captured so many people? Why do I even want to get into heaven? I don't know if I want to live forever. So that idea of eternity wasn't even that enticing. Um, and it was only later after school, largely thanks to um, quite a few role models, linking back to that, that first question that helped me see this, that Christianity is so much more than that. Um, and that actually that understanding of Christianity is, is there's some elements of it that are true, but it, it's not the full picture. And after school realizing that Christianity is really at what at its core is going with, you know, these questions that you've been asking are so great because they all link so well together. And I wish if I could go back to my high school self, one of the, the first things I would, I would do is I'd sit myself down and explain that Christianity isn't a set of rules to make me good. It's, it, it's, it gives me purpose in going back to the identity of how, how to live my life and, and gives my life meaning. That in every decision I have to make, in every moment, in, in every day, in every year, in, in, all these, in all these moments, it gives me something to model my life on and, and something to work towards, and that thing being, being Christ. And that's so much more interesting because not just only that, it's, it's that Christianity is actually, there's so much discussion going on out there and so many debates and so many really good questions where, you know, whether it's online or in church or schools or universities that you can engage in and take part in and you can all be having this really wonderful discussion around Christianity because there's so many things about Christianity that are up for discussion. Um, and that's where Christianity became really interesting to me. So going to your question of how to keep the fire going, and uh, we've heard it already, community is really important, um, having a personal relationship with Christ, but also seeing the, the, the true picture of what Christianity is, and that it's not just a set of rules, uh, because that's very restrictive, 
but actually it frees you from having to live your life according to any other identity and gives you an identity that no one can take away from you, that no one can, can, can rob you of that purpose. Um, and then when, when peers at school or whenever it was came with, with questions or attacks of my faith or put me under pressure to do things I didn't want to do, um, when I was at school, I, I could give into the, that pressure quite easily or, or feel the hits of the, that attack quite easily because it wasn't something that had come alive to me yet. It was just a set of rules and I wasn't actually prepared to fight for those rules all the time. But suddenly now with this idea of, no, th there's meaning behind this. And that, that purpose is that now, today, I get to practice the language of love, justice, grace, mercy, so that one day when Christ brings earth and heaven together to form a new earth, that I can be, I can use that language in, the, in that world. Um, and that language being the language of, of, of Christ and of heaven. Um, that's a really ex now that's so much more exciting and that is a message that I think young people will buy into a lot more because it's the true message rather than when we try water down Christianity to here's a set of rules try your best to follow them I guess here's a Bible that might help you know um, and you know hope you don't mind me saying this but um, Rob and I have chatted at school quite a bit and when I first met Rob he was uh, one of the leaders on our Christian Union um, committee and he he was a very prominent leader in that space and seemed to have it all together and had all the answers to the difficult questions and and just really had seemed to be really con had a strong conviction about his faith and that was that was really cool and that was beautiful to see but as he alluded to earlier the last few years have been a time of questioning and, 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 and at times real struggle and, and he's had to wrestle with a lot of the things that I think he just took for granted for a long time. And one of the things that we've been talking about is that I'm a lot more co comfortable with him going into his next, because he's about to matriculate. Um, I feel a lot more comfortable with, with him entering into that next stage of his life because of this time of, of wrestling and challenging and questioning because it means that he's in a far more authentic space with his, with his faith um, and sometimes that means getting angry with God sometimes that means getting really frustrated or sad or confused or, or questioning but in that space is a real beauty because that's where you discover that purpose that's where you discover that, that fuller picture of what it means to be Christian that it's, it's not just a set of rules and that this is something that can really fundamentally change the course of your entire life um, today and not something that I'm just waiting for when I die and then it becomes relevant then that today it's relevant because it gives me a purpose right now um, whereas I've seen a lot of young people leave high school leave their families homes and they're so used to just believing whatever anyone tells them that when they get to university or whatever that next stage is people are going to have a lot of opinions on how you should live your life and when they tell you those things you're so used to accepting them you just do but Rob I, I have a uh, I'm very confident that when he gets there he's not just going to accept what people say to him because he's already built a habit of questioning um, and and yeah I I have faith that because of the things he's spoken about community having a good community and um, having a good relationship with God that he will um, come to, to find, if he hasn't already, that this purpose that God is offering is second to none. Um, and, and, that's, that, and that links to everything we've spoken about, the role models, the pressure from peers, and, and the identity in Christ. And I think that's the main thing young people need to know. Okay. Thank you so much. We've come to the end of our discussion. Caleb, uh, Denny, Jordan will lead us in a song that they've prepared for us. That's not true. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for, for joining us. Uh, Robert, do you mind praying for us? Yeah, Father, we just thank you that we can come together, Lord, and that we can learn from one another, Jesus, that you made us for fellowship and for community, Father, and that we are blessed to have those things with one another, Father. We just pray that what we spoke about today, Lord, we would really would sink into us, Lord, and we would challenge when we would wrestle with, Lord, and we would just bring it all back to you, Jesus, and that in a world full of distractions, in a world full of chaos and temptation, Lord, that we would find our center in you, Lord, and we would pursue a relationship from you, Lord, and it would be that question of purpose that keeps us coming back and keeps us wrestling with you, Lord, and that is where we'd find our peace. Amen.